All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the March 6, 2023 meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board. I will call this meeting to order. Um, my name is Rachel Zenberry. I am the chair of the Redevelopment Board, um, and I'd love the other members of the board to introduce themselves, starting with Steve. Uh, Steve Rebelak. Good evening. Eugene Benson. Kidalo. And uh, we also have joining us this evening um, the director of the Department of Planning and Community Development, Claire Ricker, and Kelly Linema, the assistant director of the Department of Planning and Community Development. Thank you. Hey, Kelly, do you mind just moving the microphone in front of us? Oh, okay. Um, so let's just dive right in. So this evening we have um, several different items on our agenda. We're going to begin with the continued public hearing for docket number 3728, 99 Massachusetts Avenue, before we move to the first night of our um, Warren article, article public hearings for 2023 annual town meeting. So let us go ahead and open up um, the continued public hearing for docket number 3728. And first, I'd like to turn it over to um, Claire to see if there's anything from the department's memo that you'd like to highlight for the board. Um, thank you. Yes. Um, there's nothing <clears throat> that significant from the memo that I'd like to highlight for the board. I know the board had asked the applicant to come back um, with a better uh, parking plan, a plan for bicycle parking, um, materials related to the residential unit to be built above the attic, um, and a few other modifications, which looks like they are reflected in these updated drawings um, that were submitted. Kelly, I don't know if you have anything to add. Um, um, no, just that I posted to the agenda and forwarded to you all the uh, updated renderings of the applicants at this afternoon, um, and then the material selection, which are also um, available for review tonight. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so at this point, I'd love to turn it over to the applicant, and I'd love if you could highlight for me any of these specific items that were modified uh, from the from the first meeting. Then we'll um, get into any questions we might have. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is James Risley of LR Designs, uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. And um, based on our, our discussion at the last hearing, um, we have just the, uh, or adjusted and addressed the following. Um, we, on the front facade, we've removed the um, building identif identification sign from, uh, I believe we had it up on the stair tower. And um, we're still working with the client. They have several businesses in there. So we want to do a separate, probably a separate um, application for the signage. Um, so we, we've pulled the signage off the building for, for this round. Um, understand that we'd have to come back for the signage approval. Right. Um, we've adjusted the cornice between the, the office use and the residential use. Um, it's now um, 16 inches tall, and, and that's a result of not knowing what's behind that freeze board, um, whether the masonry continues. We know in the attic the masonry continues to a certain height, but if the exterior brick doesn't continue, we, we are prepared to cover that with, with um, this freeze board here, and then a much um, more diminutive um, um, cap on, on the parapet wall of the existing structure. Um, we've addressed, uh, adjusted some of the windows on the Lee Terrace side. We, we've Put a little more wall area and that'd be in the side elevation i think the last this one? uh i think it's a 2.2 or a 2.3 there yeah this one? Oh, yes. uh two two yep. two yep. yeah yeah so those two wider windows correspond with a corner of the living area and then a dining area and then the two minor windows are are located in a bedroom and um, I, think, I think my understanding from the conversation was that it, it s sort of gave a little more privacy to the third floor of the adjacent building. Mm. Um, on the site plan, we've um, sh shown the parking layout and found some opportunity 
for um, some landscaping. Um, at the rear of the site between 99 um, rear or 99A and our site, we're, we're showing a strip that at the smallest dimension is three feet, it gets a little bit bigger just because of the shape and the geometry of the site and then it comes along the side. Um, the parking surface would remain uh, bitconk, but then the walking surface from Lee Terrace up to the rear entry of the building would be um, in pavers so that there's a little change in the, um, the texture and the material. And then that's in that paver area is where we would have the um, bicycle locker for, for two bikes. And then we're also providing two bikes um, interior of the building for the tenants. Um, we, we prepared a shadow study um, and we looked at uh, winter solstice a.m. and noon for you know the longest cast shadows um, and then we also looked at um, summer solstice just just to bracket it and I, I think you would agree that there we've played a bit with the the massing of the um, of the residential we pulled it down uh, two feet in some places a foot and a half in others and and actually articulated a little bit more um, and I think the impact, the, the, the shadows it casts are, are very similar to what's there with the existing hip roof and penthouse that, that's on the existing building. Um, and as I just mentioned, yes, we, we reduced the overall height, um, added the landscape area, and um, on the front facade, we've, we've played with that a little bit to simplify it, eliminating the, the sort of annoying hexagonal window. Um, Thank you. We have a <laughs> we have a rendition of the entrance that actually matches what's there now, what, what we intend to keep, and then uh, a suggestion of of the planting strip at the front of the building. Um, the um, the materials that we're we're showing here are um, uh, aluminum, a painted aluminum panel, um, and then you know the windows, and that's in like a graphite color. And yeah, this is a, the the, the, panel. the um, specifications for that. And then um, we also would like to show uh, the the white version of the building because we're we're sort of would prefer to maybe paint the building, um, update it a little bit, modernize it. Um, and so that's that's where we're at. Thank you very much. I appreciate the update. And um, thanks for uh, forwarding those renderings today. Much appreciated. Uh, let's go ahead and start with any questions. Uh, first, with Ken. I'm giving you my opinion, only my opinion, OK? I prefer the red. Uh, the natural brick. Natural brick. Yeah. OK. Thank you for listening to us on uh, reducing the stair tower height and uh, bringing down the parapet and, um, and doing that trim. I think that looks much nicer and it blends in better with the, uh, with the surroundings. Uh, I do ask, uh, would you consider two more things? I'm going to ask for it. They're pretty small. Along, along the back where you have uh, the parking. Can we go just go to the site plan? You have some uh, planting areas right around the parking there. I'm not sure a while back, <coughs> there used to be two trees there. So this is how much got cut down. Was those trees on your property or was it on a neighbor's property? Well, do you recall the trees? I, I don't know how far I, back you're Yeah, we thinking. only owned the property for about a year, maybe a year and a half. So I don't recall we're cutting any trees. Okay, I, I, I looked in Google. Okay. And just looking at the area and, yeah. and you know, it's just, um, it's just a little too busy to walk out there um, these last couple of days. So I, I saw there's two big trees there. Would you uh, consider putting some plantings along that edge there in front of the, the cars? On the left, uh, we're showing green right now. Right where the arrows were put. Yes. Up and down right there. 
Sure, of course. So, right here? Yes. Yeah, that's intended to be landscape so area. No, but you don't have any planting, so I'm, I'm asking what kind of plants you're going to put there. Would you mind putting some bigger shrubs there or something, you know? Some greenery, just besides not grass. Yeah, I think we'd be open to, to um, hammering out a, a planting plant. And then, is there going to be a fence along that area there? That's sure. something I'm going to have to ask for because the headlights glare right into the unit. That's uh, not a problem. Uh, next door. Yeah. So, not a problem putting a fence along the back there? And adding some bushes and just um, sure. Let me just get that again. I think a fancy around here, or I'll do it back to it's no problem. So you're talking about this area, so when cars are parking, well, I'll go this, I'll go this way. I'll go this way. <laughs> I never listen to my friend Steve. <laughs> I'd actually prefer if you did the fencing here and here and not along here. Okay. But allow you to put plantings along here. Because if you put the fence there, it, it creates a canyon, nothing is going to grow. Yeah. yeah, and actually it would be better to leave it open because even to take care of the landscaping, if there's a yeah. fence, that would be bad force. Yeah, and, yes. the, so okay. and the door is actually on this yeah, side. Yes. Uh, yeah, there's a door. Yes. There's a door right here. Also, the other thing um, a while back when I noticed is there's a drive lane right here. That's your neighbor, right? Yeah. They scooch over onto your uh, yeah. onto your property quite a bit, okay? Almost like a foot and a half, and they've been driving on that. Your your. I, I like you to if you can put some landscaping there, like <laughs> enhance the landscaping. I mean, otherwise if you put any grass there or anything else, it's just gonna be run over. So bushes. And we're gonna lose our yeah. island there, you know. Okay. And fence. Yep. Your, you know, it, it's very non porous right now. You, get no, you, get, you don't get too much yeah. uh, vegetation. I just want to encourage the vegetation and not have the things run over. So, mainly the fence, some vegetation here and here. We can match the bushes on the front, on the side, too. Bushes here? Yeah, so we, we showed on the renderings uh, some bushings on the, some, some shrubbery yeah, on the front. Yeah, but it didn't call off or anything. Right? Yeah, yeah, so you see has sure over there? So we can do it the same on the side. Yeah, just call up what it is. Though. I, I, I mean, what we would most likely request is a uh, planting schedule be submitted to the um, department. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Anything else, Ken? Uh, nope. Great. Thank you very much, Jean. Questions? Yes. Thanks. Yeah. I to say start by saying thank you for the shadow study. That was very helpful. Good to see thank you for making all the proposed changes i think they're very helpful i like the project a lot my concern is whether the project is consistent with the zoning bylaw and if it's not whether we as a board have any ability to do anything about that so i want to walk you through some of these things so the first one is we have a bylaw that requires solar on roofs um, for um, anything undergoing environmental design review with six exemptions. And I think there's some disagreement, and I'll discuss it with my colleagues afterward, but I don't think you meet any of the exemptions, which would require at least 50% of the roof area to be solar unless it's shaded or tilted in the wrong direction you could take a look at the bylaw and see. So um, I think it's something for you to look at and see if we put solar. I'll make your money back in a few years yeah. by putting solar on it, but it's, it's a bylaw. Um, I think one of, your one of your parking spaces will need to be a handicapped space. I think that because I'm not an expert on this, the building inspector is. And what I don't know is whether, because you now don't have one, you're not going to need to put one in after you're done redoing part of the parking area. But that will be something that you'll have to work out with the building inspector, and you may have to come back if it substantially changes what you do. Um, 
Let, let's go. To, I'm going to stand up also to go to this design. So I'm, I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to turn that mic so that it picks him up. The house that's back here is also a red. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. So we have a bylaw that says that there needs to be two options um, 10 feet or 5 feet and a fence with plantings along this edge to comply. So I don't know if this is five feet or not. No, it's not. Yeah, so this is um, 6.1.11D1 for my colleagues, um, which would require that. Again, I think the other option is to not change this and you'd be non-conforming use. We'll discuss it with my colleagues. But once you start moving this around, <coughs> maybe you lose the nonconformity, and then you'd have to pull everything over this way to do the five feet. Um, so there's another odd requirement in the bylaw that says you can't arrange parking where people have to back out onto a public road, which they do now. So we will have to decide whether we can be relief from that or whether if you don't do anything with the parking, it continues to be a non-conforming use and we can allow it. Um, let me see. The bike parking that you're putting um, inside the building, is that stairs or a ramp? Down to stairs. It's it's a half flight of stairs. Yeah. See, that's going to be a problem that we can't fix. The bylaw is pretty specific that um, you can't have required indoor bike parking that requires somebody to lift a bike up or down a set of stairs. Okay. So we're going to need to figure out what to do with that parking, the bicycle parking. Um, yeah, that's that's interesting because the it's a basically a split entry. I mean, I the whole building if, is. If you know that um, the right side of the building where you have the ramp going down and in, if you put the bicycle parking in there, then they wouldn't be. I don't know if it's possible. Yeah. I'm not saying. Yeah. But if you did that, then they wouldn't be lifting up or downstairs because they'd be rolling the bicycles in. I just suggest that as one. But they cannot put the, the to bike do that. on that when they open the door. Is that enough room on the side door on the back? Or, or you could put a second locker for bicycles out back. Yeah. That's the other thing. Because we have an entrance on the back that might fit. Yeah, we can't have it in the stair hall though. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. So, or, or you could put a second locker out back. Yeah. That's where we were last time with That's the two we lockers. Were last time. Yep. Yeah. So you could do that. Okay. Like the current thing, I think, runs a foul of the body. Um, let me take a look at um, the page ZO.1, if you could pull that up. There it is. So this zoning data, tables of dimensions, if you take a look at open space minimum landscaped area, allowed or required in this case is 10. Existing is five and proposed is 3.6. Is that correct? How do you get to that? How do you get to those numbers? A 10 is correct. I'm just wondering about how you got to the five and the 3.6. That was, it was oh, it, 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 was a, it was a reduction. Um, it's actually probably closer to five again with the additional um, landscape area, it was a reduction caused by the ramp. So when uh -huh. I was doing this table, we, we, we had the ramp in, um, which, which at, at the time was just Lee Terrace bleeding up to the edge of the building, mm -hmm. but now it's the ramp. And so I took that, that landscape area out of it. And that, that was, that represent that reduction in the open area. Yeah. So here, here's where I am on this one. Um, the bylaw is pretty clear to me, at least, that um, we can't allow something that makes the nonconformity worse. So if you're going from 
5 to something under 5, you're making the nonconformity worse. And at least as I read the bylaw, can't do it. So I think, for me, I would need to see how you calculated these numbers and if there's a way that you can get back to five I, on that. Can I, just a quick question. When you calculated the ramp, because it used to be asphalt, so it was not landscape. So we didn't reduce. Is that, am I wrong? No, there was, there was some plant wasn't very well planted, but there was some okay. strip there that I, I had right. calculated. Right. Yeah, you, I think you need to either figure out how to get some more landscape yeah, in we'll, so you're back at we'll, five. We'll talk about that right. a little bit more right. am amongst us right. and whether or not that's going to be required. Yeah, and, yeah. 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 and I just, just clarification, it, it was an oversight, but the that 3.6 does not include the proposed so we, we, I would need to know landscape area that we're presenting tonight. I would need to know what those number is personally. Um, the last thing, at, at the last meeting, I mentioned about the step backs and that my colleagues are comfortable if the step backs are from the property line. And I said I believe the step back was from the facade and this doesn't meet it. But it's happened a number of times, and so I told my colleagues last time, I'm not going to prevent something from going forward, since I'm the only one who disagrees about the step backs. So um, as long as the total adds up to 7.5, even though that's not how I interpret the bylaw, since all of my colleagues interpret it the other way, I won't prevent something from happening because of that. And that's it. Great. Thank you, Jean. Um, I just have, um, thank you. I'll just note oh, first my, yeah, I'll just note my couple items because they're, they're fairly small. And again, we'll, we'll talk about some of, of these items that Jean just presented, um, following any public comment that, that, uh, we might have this evening. Um, the only question I have is on the specification of the um, material for the the new addition. Um, I believe that you described that as standing seam before, but it looks like it's a flat panel that are that are kind of butt together yeah. in the in the latest specification. Is that correct? That, that's correct. I was unsuccessful in finding a a material that matched my vision mm -hmm. for the standing seam, and uh, this sort of checks some of the boxes that my client has, you know, for, for cost and, and sort of appearance. Yep. So my biggest concern here is when I look at the specification, it looks like um, rather than, you know, when you have a standing seam metal panel, you have that nice shadow line, obviously, from the um, projecting seam cover. Um, this one, it looks like you have an un- painted metal, thin metal edge that's exposed um, in the way that the, at least the cut sheet that I have been provided. Yeah, I think that's just a, a flash of a glare of light because the paint should continue around. Um, but is that what you're reacting to? Yes, is the, that, exactly. Yeah, I so think, I think that's their photo. It should. I'd need to see a sample of that in that case because I would not approve it with that um, without knowing for sure whether or not that's that's a, a finished edge or or not um, I've I've seen it where it is not and it is not something that yeah. that I would feel comfortable approving um, just I mean I know this is your time to talk but they also yep. offer the same system but with a reveal um, that would give us a reverse shadow line so it's like I, a reverse I would definitely be much more interested in seeing the reveal I think it's it's feeling a little I, I like again the, the modern addition against the you know more traditional um, brick building below um, and if we could get a little bit more of a shadow and and they do offer the V I'd be interested in seeing that okay great Steve okay uh, thank you um, Mine are, my comments are probably shorter. No um, opinion. <laughs> on the, a little bit uh, so let's, one, um, one minor thing on Z0.1. 
Um, the table of parking requirements you listed as one and a half for dwelling unit. That's actually an old requirement. It's only one, um, but this it doesn't really affect what you've um, submitted. It's just an F. I'm just letting you know as an FYI. Okay. Appreciate that. Um, I appreciate your efforts to add the bicycle parking, um, and I. I agree with Mr. Benson that with respect to the open space, there is something we have to work through. The portions of the bylaw that are relevant are 814A and 814B. These are nonconformities dealing with buildings other than single or two family homes. But basically, it says if you, the, the gist of the bylaw is if you make an alteration to a nonconforming building that's not a single or two family home, you can't do it in a way that increases a nonconformity. Now, when we last met, um, you know, I had asked for 122 square feet of landscaped open space, which would be conforming with the respect of to the the residential unit. I had assumed, and apparently wrongly, that the amount of landscaping landscaping landscape I didn't realize that there was landscaped open space being reduced so that's that's where the the imbalance comes from um, yeah. and it could be again I know that you mentioned that you did not add in the new landscaping it no, could no. wind up being a wash but we would need yeah. to understand yeah. mm -hmm. what that totally. what no, that, that calculation is not to yep. that. especially if you have to widen the one in back to five to five feet with a fence. All right, and uh, the last item uh, with respect to the two renderings, um, person, I, I think I agree with Mr. Lau, I like the brick better, but honestly, I'd be happy with either one. Great, any other um, questions before I open it up for public comment? Okay. Um, so if there are um, any members of the public joining us who wish to ask any questions or speak on this particular item tonight? Oh, on this? This particular okay. hearing. Oh, um, well, I'm it, just it, very, oh, Chris sorry. Anderson, 12 Oakland Road West. Thank you. I'm really impressed by this design. It's beautiful. Great. And I prefer the white to the brick myself, but it's more modern. But I, I'm not really viewing it uh, with the surrounding. Great. That's uh, right near Sunnyside, right? Uh, no. It's 90, Mass Ave. 99, Mass Ave. Yeah. A little further away. Oh. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, seeing no other members of the public here, we'll close public comments and um, turn it back to the board for discussion. Um, let's see. So. Bless you. Bless you, yes. We have a couple um, items that were raised this evening. Um, one, so I'll just take these in order. So the first is regarding um, solar on uh, the, the roof. Um, so we would need, let me see here. Do we have a, I don't know if there was a roof plan provided. This, this was is section 642. Six, six, the 6.4. And 6.4.2 are the exemptions. So I think from, from my perspective, if I could say, is your option is either to look at these and say, look, we think we meet one of the exemptions, or more than one, or to come back with the roof plan with solar on at least half. Okay. That's at least my perspective on this. Steve, your thoughts. looking through skimming over the exemptions i'm not none of them are jumping out as one uh, that's applicable um you know which which would bring us back to 50 percent solar on the roof mm -hmm. i i don't think we have a problem with that with that 50 percent right okay right and i'm not um up on it entirely, but I do believe the new stretch code may be pushing us into that anyway. So. Although we're not here yet, but it will yeah, be. Yeah, in July. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ken, in agreement, you don't see. With the solar or? With the solar. Not a problem. Okay. Well, they said they're going to do it, right? Yep. So we're all set. Okay. 
the next item is um, the rear planting area. So um, Jean was bringing up that again, once we touch the parking, we have to ensure that we are not creating um, any new non-conformities, correct? And um, your first point was in reaching the five foot depth with the fence. So do we have any room in the parking area to pull that forward, the foot and a half that you need? It becomes problematic with the bicycle sheds. Yep. Because I think I have a dimension of maybe three or four feet, or four feet. Um, so that would be a dimension I have to pay attention to and then, or, or find a different location for the bicycle sheds in order to achieve the five feet. Um, I'm a little, I don't want to be the one to propose a fence along the back property line because I'm not sure how 99 rear, mm -hmm. they have tandem spaces too and is that going to impede them? Whereas with the landscape, at least their car door could you know, swing towards landscape or something like that. Whereas if it's like a fence, then they may be pinned in there and maybe I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know that the bylaw says where the fence has to be on that five, five foot yeah. expanse, just that it needs to be fence yeah. and planted. I, so I, you I, can take a look at that bylaw too. Gene, can I? Go ahead, Ken. Uh, I was viewing this as a non-conforming uh, parking lot right now, so if you see this existing right now, Gene, it's um, by putting a fence here, they park here already, which is the, which is um, your, your, your rear neighbor. And it, it, it tightens up the whole. So, so I think they've got a couple, I, I agree with you. I think they've got a couple of things. One is we could either decide that even though they're moving the parking lot a little bit, mm -hmm. it doesn't really change the nonconformity. That's how I see it. Right? And we could decide that, or we could decide that we're okay with moving the parking, but we think that the buffer is appropriate to have. On the front side, right? Uh, no, on, on well, the, the front, the side is an option, I think, but the rear is a requirement. So we could decide one or the other of those, I think. And their problem, I think, too, is going to be if the building inspector says, oh, one of those six spaces needs to be handicap accessible, then they're going to have a real fit problem. If they reduce it to five spaces, they could conceivably solve every one of these problems. But that's their call. Well, can we, uh, let me decouple what you just said, okay? Okay. Um, I, I like to make an argument that this is a non-conforming parking space, parking lot, and, we, and, we, and we're shifting it over a little bit, so. Maintaining the non-conformity. Maintaining non-conformity, but not increasing it, but we're making it a little better, so I'm suggesting, okay, mm -hmm. that they put uh, fencing and vegetation along uh, Plan West. That's West? Yes. The West Side. Mm -hmm. And leave the. Um, plan North. Uh, south. Oh, west Side. Plan, plan North. North. Right. Yeah. Yes. The what, North Side. What did you propose to put along the North border, the one that. Um, that would be our. That would be landscaped. With what? Um, I guess the request was we do something more substantial shrubs, grasses, ornamental grasses, not just lawn, but grasses, um, other perennials. So you're going to cut the, the parking lot up uh, at the property line and, and put stuff in? That, that's what this is that's proposing. What that's what's in the plan right now. Okay. Which I, mean, I know that neighbors going to be super excited about that. <laughs> Because that's where they park as well, and right now it's kind of like a common it's space, a great space. And, and I'm not, you know, we're not trying just to. You I've know, been back there. It's a free for all. I mean, you, you, yeah, you, which which we're fine because you know we just move there and just want to maintain peace. But once we cut that and put a bunch of shrubbery, I'm sure we're gonna. 
even though it's our property, even though we have to do it, it's just gonna stir the pot a little bit. So adding another fence, then it's gonna stir the pot a lot. And I'm just voicing my. All right. So we may just, if we consider it non-conforming, then we don't have to worry about them. That's how. Out. That's how I saw. Okay. And, and I'm not saying that's how you guys. I'm right. just giving you my opinion how I saw that, yep. for that part there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then as far as uh, the handicap situation. I just leave that up to the building official. That's if what you, I'm saying. It's and and not, say, not tell them to reduce anything. Oh, I mean, that's, what, that's what I said. Okay. Yeah. On that, I mean, the, is the concern is landscape or perme permeability? Is the main concern for that parking, that rear? I know that the water needs to go somewhere, and we do. I'm, not, I'm not concerned about either one of those along this side here. Okay. So, okay. can I make a big suggestion? That'd be fine that. Please, please, go ahead. So we'll yep. definitely, here we so go. here, okay, we'll put the shrubbery and uh, fencing. Fencing. Can we do permeable pavers here? Is that, would that, would that be acceptable uh, instead of shrubbery? Or is that, that the landscaping here, it's, uh, it's also a, a must, is that? My concern is just the back mason. That's why I'm saying that. If I become, yes. we're gonna do permeable papers here, right? Papers, which we're gonna have water penetration. Mm -hmm. Yep. Claire, we've got a. Oh, sorry, sorry. I mean, if we have to do do it, I'm just trying to maintain uh, the use of the whole common mm -hmm. yep. back area. I. Do you understand? What I'm I yes, personally uh, mm -hmm. wouldn't suggest that. Okay. Just because. Uh, that just gives encouragement to park more cars there than what's there right now. Uh, I can see parking eight cars back there or another more cars back there just because it's all wide and open. And I'd rather not do that. I'd rather you maintain your six and have some sort of nice uh, plan there. But that's my opinion. I'm going to see what I my mean, other. Part, part of this is a betterment right so it's well it's not, to we're create gonna a fit eight cars there no matter what i'll tell you that but the neighbors already parked there too so that and i'm not i don't think they're going to stop parking it's just going to make i don't want them to encourage to park on your side okay you see, you see what i'm getting at i mean we said that last time i, I know you weren't i don't yeah, you I apologize weren't I wasn't time. Time. that right now you can't tell where one property ends yeah. and the other begins and we felt it was important to have, to have that. some Boundary. demarcation mm -hmm between the two. But I, I would agree with, I think, the way that Ken is seeing this in that I think it's an existing non-conformity, which they're actually bettering by adding some of the landscaping I that, can live with that, that we're asking too. for. Okay. Steve? So, yeah. Um, my one request would be when you are uh, working on a landscaping schedule, our Conservation Commission publishes a list of preferred native plantings. Uh, where possible, if you could choose from that list. Yeah, that's not a problem. It's, it's nice to have guidance. <laughs> yes, it's better. <laughs> All right. Um, so we talked about solar, the rear planting, um, the backing into the public road. Again, I'm seeing this as an existing right. nonconformity, yeah. unless there's any mm -hmm. other I'm discussion there. Okay. Um, we talked about the bicycle parking, um, the interior bicycle parking and the stairs, and it sounded like you were amenable to adding back in the second exterior bike rack. Okay. Does that work? Okay. Um, Whatever that thing's called. Yes. <laughs> and then um, the last piece is the resolution on the open space. Um, I. You know, I think the trade-off here is for adding an accessible ramp to the building. And so, to me, that seems like making the building accessible seems like a um, good trade-off for the open space that it is, that it is um, taking, taking over. But that is the way that I'm looking at it. And again, I know we don't have the final calculations because the left-hand side has not been. I think we need the final calculations because it would be nice if the bylaw allowed that trade-off, but it doesn't. And I think 
the clear intention was not, as my opinion at least, not to increase the nonconformity. So maybe you can work with um, planning staff on how to add up the numbers. Mm -hmm. Question just for clarification in the definition of landscape open space, it does include walkways and pathways. So, if they were to take that edge of the, uh, the walkway or pathway where the bike parking is, and if they were to make that permeable, would the board consider that as part of the equations for landscape open space? Since that is an allowance in the definition, yeah, that's why I was hoping they would yeah, work with that was very staff. Clearly they would work with. I was hoping yeah, they would work with staff yeah, that was, yeah. on that was coming up with the calculation. Um, yeah. Dirt that you could dig <laughs> when, yeah, I, so when I calculate so its landscape area. Right now is a completely paved situation. Yeah. I didn't have any other. That, yeah. that could contribute to the use okay. of the landscape open space. Can I say something? Please, Ken, go ahead. I think with, uh, with that added square footage, I think we should be fine. We'll see what it is. And, and uh, if it is, then I'm okay with it. If you are close, Let's talk some more and find a creative way of doing this, okay? I, I don't want this to stop the project, okay? okay? Uh, but uh, this one, I agree with Gene. There's no way to wiggle out of this one here. Yeah. Um, and uh, But I think we can get there. Mm -hmm. I really do. Yeah, okay. so Just be a little creative. Okay. Not by fudging the numbers. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> really read it. That's what Gene said, okay? opportunities. <laughs> Steve. Um, I think we've nothing nothing to add. Okay, great. So. Um, or, or I should say I'm, I agree with Mr. Lau. I, I would prefer, I hope we can find a way to make this, make this all work. Okay. So. I think we made a lot of progress. I think that there is a couple of items which um, we would need to to see for the final approval. So we need that calculation on the on the open space. Um, we also I'd like I'd like to see the specification on that um, okay. the, the, the metal panel with the with the reveal. Um, I'd like to see the second bike rack on the exterior. We'd like to see where a plan, a roof plan for how you intend to add solar to 50% of the roof. Um, we'll be adding the fencing along Clan West. Exactly. Um, and we'll need to see some indication of the um, planting, you know, with an identification that you'll be using the Town of Arlington um, native planting schedule. Um, Think. Uh, reinforce the buffer zone along the. That's what the west side. Yep. Along the side of the building, with your neighbor. See that green strip right there. Yes. They. Well, yeah. That'll yes. Be that, that's yeah. What I included with the fence, and then the, and then we need to add this planting schedule. Can right. I make another suggestion? Please. Can we? make an approval for this project so they're not coming back in again and make it subjective to uh, I'd like to see some of the things that we talked about I'd like them to come back okay I just seeing this as a fairly nice project and mm -hmm. it's only been one unit this is their this will be their third meeting that's all uh, I'm hoping that we find a way of uh, not costing this and encouraging more of this kind of stuff. Uh, I, I think, though, that they they have a few things which have not been addressed. Um, again, I don't think it's a significant request in terms of the amount of time it should take. So, you know, hopefully it would be just... Um, we have a very specific list of, of yeah. requests, and I think that um, you know if you're able to to come back. Unfortunately, there's no. You need all four um, people to vote in favor because that we're we're short one member, and um, we have one member who would like you to come back. So okay. that's what we're going to have to 
to deal no, with I, this one. I, I appreciate it, but I also appreciate that it's not a it's not insurmountable list. I think we can we can turn around very quickly. Fabulous, great. great. And can we squeeze this in earlier? Then well, let, let's take a look. I think at, at schedule next. So, Kelly, if you want to, I'd say um, next week we'll be more articles, and that would we don't have enough time for them to turn it around. Um, the twenty seventh. Seven gives two weeks. Yeah, the twenty seventh should work. Okay. And you think then you need to get things to the department a few days ahead of the week before. The week yeah. before. Yeah. So if you could because they are it's the Wednesday before I think if you could get those to us by Tuesday the Tuesday before the twenty first. End of the day on Tuesday, so anytime up to the very end of the day, so long as we can turn them around on Wednesday. Any other um, comments for the applicant? I, I just have one comment Please. for the board. Under 8.1.1, I think we're going to have to make a finding, and I'm, I'd be willing to do this, that the change is not substantially more detrimental yeah, absolutely. to the, yep. than yes. the existing non-conforming structure. Yes. So yes. we can do that when we vote on the special yes. I think we're in all agreement there, I yeah. believe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so is there a motion to continue, excuse me, let me get the docket number, docket number 3728 for 99 Massachusetts Avenue, um, uh, to continue the hearing to, where did I write down the date? March 27th. So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you so much. Look Thank forward you. to seeing you. Thank you. Thank you well, actually, just, just sorry. Just to be clear, I, I, uh, we're continuing it to this room. Yes, <laughs> to, to this well, room. We don't have to say. Anything. Sorry, could I? Can you, well, uh, we never uh, know where we're going to meet. Uh, yeah. Can I? Yes. Make, uh, I think we did too fast. Uh, are we going to do white or red? Oh. I, I, I'm neutral. I, either one works <laughs> okay. for me. Because I was so going to ask you guys. Right. Red. Have Either, because either one I, is fine, I, I, and we can't dictate. No, no, but, no, but they said it, and we and we should yes. comment on it. Red, you preferred red. You said yes, I did. You preferred red. Red. I prefer red as well. So can we add that in? That it's yes. not going to paint this. It's a red brick. Oh. Can we, I? We brought it up because we didn't want to like turn around and do it after we got the special yes. permit. Yes. That wouldn't have been that happy. Would, that would have been <laughs> pretty lousy. So. That wouldn't have been very happy here. <laughs> and we understand it's just paint. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right, uh, let's see. So that concludes agenda item number one. Sorry, I didn't want to get, I want no, to get. I appreciate that. Thank you for the reminder. Much appreciated. Uh, we'll now move to the second agenda item, which is um, the first night of Warren Article public hearings for 2023 annual town meeting. Um, what we will do is open the public hearing tonight. We will have one more um, night of public hearings next week on um, the 13th, on the 13th, um, at which time we will close the public hearing and um, we will deliberate and vote on March 27th. So um, at this time, what I'd like to do is um, open up the public hearing with the first article, which is Article 31. Um, a zoning bylaw amendment related to industrial district animal um, daycare use, which was um, inserted at the request of Kristen Anderson and 10 registered voters. So if you wouldn't mind uh, and, and may I when situating. She's coming up. So yes. I'm going to recuse myself from discussing or voting on this. Kristen is the co-chair or co-leader of Save the L. Wife Brook, and I'm on the steering committee. And we work together a lot, so I think it's more appropriate for me to recuse myself from the discussion and vote on this. I thought you were going to say because you had a dog or something. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have a dog. I though. do have a dog. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice dog too. So, yeah, so Jean, I I appreciate that you are doing that. I think that, um, people in town work on committees with a with a lot of I know, folks. I know. So I'm, I I'm, I'm I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I, I just think it's, I may but I, take I, a vote in a few weeks when okay. we come to the final. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. 
So if you vote on this, is three votes enough? It yeah, needs to be a simple majority. We're not simple voting today. Okay. Yes. But, oh, okay. Oh, you're not... So you're not you, voting you, today. I know, but you are not confusing I'm not the sure whole. If I'm gonna vote or not. Okay, just He's today. He's confusing himself from the discussion this evening, and then I think we'll have another. Fair enough. Okay, I was. Okay. Okay. Uh, so please, um, we'd love for you to um, present your thoughts on the uh, proposed amendment. All right. Thank you. Um, and I'm sorry if you could please introduce yourself, first, last name, and address. Yeah. Um, thank you. Kristen Anderson, 12 Upland Road West. Um, and thanks for having me here. Um, to discuss allowing animal daycare use in the industrial zone. Um, during the lockdown period of the COVID-19 pandemic, many Arlington residents were forced to stay home. Um, to remedy intense loneliness, many of our neighbors decided to welcome new pets into their homes. Now that the pandemic restrictions have lift lifted, people are going back into the office, leaving their pandemic pets at home. Many of these animals are very unhappy being home alone, particularly dogs. Dogs are social animals and suffer greatly when left alone. Arlington is in desperate need of animal daycare. To the best of my knowledge, there exists in town only one animal daycare business, but it is small with very limited capacity. I was actually fortunate enough to send my pandemic puppy there for the first year of her life, just once a week. Um, she stayed there and got well socialized with other dogs and now she loves every single dog that she meets. Um, but unfortunately that doggy daycare business only allows a very small number of dogs, almost all smaller breeds into their program. So everyone that I know is sending their dogs to neighboring towns for daycare. Most of Arlington's pooches are sent to Crate Escape in Belmont. Arlington's residents should not have to travel outside of town to access animal daycare. Um, additionally, there's an excellent dog groomer in Arlington, um, who I've used for many years, who wanted to expand her business a few years back to offer doggy daycare. It would have required moving into a larger space, um, and she found one in the industrial zone, but she was unable to grow her business and offer doggy daycare to residents there because the use was not allowed. Um, so this use restriction has had a negative impact on her ability to grow her business and it has negatively impacted the residents of Arlington by denying them a local service that they desperately need. So I'm here tonight to see how um, the redevelopment board feels about mo moving forward with this use change to allow animal daycare in the industrial zone in the 2023 Springtown meeting. Great. So I uh, thank you for your insight. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate you bringing this forward. Um, this is something that the board had actually discussed at one point earlier this year, too, so it's certainly something that um, uh, we uh, have probably some thoughts on. Um, we won't um, do, you know, go through a full discussion tonight, but what I'll do is I'll ask um, each members, uh, member of the board to give their initial thoughts and any questions they might have for you. Okay. Okay. We'll start with Steve. Yeah, this, this seems like a, a, a very reasonable change to change to make and there's clearly demand for it so mm -hmm. I have no further questions. Gene? Oh, that's right. I forgot. Ken. I'm supportive of this. I think it's a good it's a good uh, warrant article and uh, no questions. Great. Yep. And uh, I completely agree as well. We had this on our on our list that we were contemplating for um, the spring anyway, so I'm glad that you brought it forward. Okay. So Okay, I'm sorry, I just have one Please question. Please, Claire. <clears throat> and we're just talking about daytime, uh, doggy daycare, no overnight, no boarding, no long term. So that's going to be handled by, say, a vet or something like that, right? Yeah. Just yeah. Um, this, this is for just daycare during the day. I mean, I could see that there could be a need for overnight care, mm -hmm. but um, I'd like to get this through easily yeah um and perhaps if we allowed animal daycare um in the industrial zone then we could come back and review overnight care for the board. later yeah yeah but it seems like a if it's allowed in the business district why not the industrial zone right i'm with you <laughs> <laughs> i take my dog to daycare too <laughs> yeah good yeah all right Yep. Um, so I think that the only thing, 
we need? We do we have the main motion it's in the text on this here, one? So it would just be to add um, a Y. The Y in the use table. Right. Great. Uh, I don't think we have any other questions. So at this point, I will open it up to the public for anyone who might have comment. Please. Please, if you could uh, <coughs> use the microphone. Uh, first, last name and address, please. Thank you. Uh, Chris Loretti, 56 Adams Street. Um, I support this, and I hope the board will, too. I had originally thought that the town allowed kennels, which would provide for um, you know, overnight and, and daycare for pets, um, and looked at the old version of the bylaw to see if they were in there, and, and it's not. It's the way it is now. Um, I think that's, I hope you know, you'll support this, but I think it, you also need to consider overnight care for animals as well. And as far as I can tell, our zoning bylaw does not provide that unless it's in the care of a veterinarian. Um, and I don't think kennels often have vets with them, and I don't know enough about them. But the very strange thing was when I looked um, and did a little bit of searching, the town bylaws contain extensive regulations for permitting kennels and other types of animal daycare as part of the town bylaws. Yet the zoning bylaw does not contemplate the town having kennels or anything like that. So when you look later on, I hope you look more broadly than just than just the daycare provisions and go back and look at the um, the town bylaws as well um, because I think Arlington is really out of step with other communities but certainly as an interim measure I hope you'll support this um, it's certainly an eminently reasonable uh, proposition and you know there's really no reason if we're going to have these things in um, business districts that you don't have it in the industrial districts as well Thanks. Great. thank you much appreciate it um, and, and I'll just say um, again I mentioned that the board was already lo looking at, at speaking about this. One of the things that um, we had talked about for the fall was actually looking at the industrial uses kind of more, more, more broadly um, for things like this, again, that may not have made it in uh, when it was originally created. So thank you so much. So um, we will see you back on the 27th when we will um, uh, have a discussion and uh, take a vote on uh, on this Thank particular one article. Easy so far. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen. Much appreciated. All right, uh, so let's move to Article 26, which is a zoning bylaw amendment related to industrial district uh, development standards. And um, for the next three um, zoning bylaw amendment, proposed zoning bylaw amendments, these were inserted at the request of the Redevelopment Board. So I will turn it over. Um, Claire, do you want me to turn it over to you or Kelly to run through the memo? Um, Kelly can go through the memo. Great. That's fine. I do need to plug in a second. Sure, absolutely. Uh, no, do you want to join us up here? I'm just going to pull this. Sorry. Cord management, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kelly Lanema, Assistant Director, Department of Planning and Community Development. So in the memo that we provided, um, just do these in order here, um, and I'm also um, taking a look at some of the changes that Jean had suggested to me separately. So we have in um, 20, oh my goodness, when was this? In 2020, when did we update the industrial districts? Um, in 2021, it was the spring of 2021 that the town approved changes to the industrial districts. And one of the changes, what the key changes to the industrial districts also established a set of standards and criteria by which the uh, proposals for the industrial district would be reviewed. There's a second set of additional criteria that were laid for, that were laid forth and approved by town meeting um, that would apply additional standards above and beyond the base criteria for an applicant who had proposed or who was seeking an addition, like an exception to the height maximum. The third standard in this additional set of standards was to retain and treat 100% of stormwater on site. Um, what the board has discovered um, through proposals in the last year is that this is 
too vague <laughs> and doesn't actually set forth the kind of criteria that you would want to consider and it doesn't give us anything measurable to look at um, or staff either when we're when we're evaluating proposals so that we can give constructive feedback to applicants in advance of them filing a, um, an application so we worked with um, David Morgan, who's the town's environmental planner and conservation agent, conservation agent, and we also worked with Wayne Chenard and William Coppathorn from the engineering department to establish a set of criteria. We also looked at a number of zoning bylaws from peer communities. Um, the most notable thing is that stormwater is typically referred to in a zoning bylaw, and it, uh, there's a separate, most communities refer to the town or municipalities stormwater bylaw um, and and a lot of these it's really because when you're looking at stormwater some of the criterion change over time and you wouldn't want to establish something in a, in a zoning bylaw that's going to be updated over time and then would become out of date and so then you're using a criteria that actually is inappropriate so what we tried to do in um, and what David and Wayne tried to do is to both refer to current criteria and refer to current um, current regulations with the understanding that if an applicant is seeking an exemption to a minimum or to a maximum height, there should be an additional threshold. Um, so we want that criteria to be above and beyond what would be required for a typical application, but we wouldn't want it to be so far above and beyond that it would render the the exemption infeasible or would basically mean that it exists in the zoning bylaw, but it isn't something that actually could be attained. Um, so they came up with um, really establishing two separate criteria, and that's looking at um, a design storm, so really looking at what's the minimum design storm that should be accommodated, and then contaminant loading standards. Um, and then, you know, in the memo, we really discuss what those, what those thresholds should be. And overall, in the recommended text of the zoning, we wanted to refer to um, exterior uh, standards that are updated over time to make sure that whatever criterion were available for doing something that exceeded the that if somebody wanted an exemption from the height minimum or the height maximum there would be these additional criteria but they would also change and perhaps become con more stringent over time as storms change and climate changes so that's really what is included in the text of the proposed amendment as you see here Thank you so much, and thank you for working um, with them to create this. I think this is definitely a step in the right direction and takes away some of the ambiguity that we've been um, faced with. So I'll start with Kim. Any questions for Kelly or comments to the proposed text? No. Great. Gene. No, I just get Kelly some minor wording suggestions, which we can talk about. Um, and I think, yeah, I think it's a good way to go about doing it. I think, from my perspective, if this is in place, we're going to need, you know, either the town engineer or conservation agent when these things come through to take a look at them. Because I don't think anybody on this board is qualified to make a determination as to whether the stormwater system that's being proposed will actually meet this standard, so I think we're going to have to rely on them, which makes sense. Yeah. And, and we are, um, now for larger projects that come through, we are doing a design review team, and the town engineer is part of that, so that would be one of the checklist items that we would include, was having, having him comment on whether the stormwater materials provided actually met the thresholds that are stated in the zoning bylaw. So, sorry. Go for it, Ken. The stormwater review will be done prior to us reviewing the project. It's, it's a prerequis prerequisite for uh, submitting for our review. <laughs> we, it is my intention to continue to do an interdepartment review of plans as they come in, including with the engineer, so that they would at least be somewhat pre vetted before they come to this board. Now, if in a deeper review after this board has seen some documents there's questions really uh, remaining about stormwater those would also be answered by the town engineer at that point the i mean this is really sort of a very small percentage of cases that would come through where it's in the industrial district 
and they're also requesting an exemption from the height maximum. And so this additional criteria would be obviously reviewed internally. The, the design, the development review team also meets, but, um, and then so we get that preliminary feedback, but this would be like an additional step for somebody who's looking for the exemption. I mean, I agree with Ken. I think it would be very helpful if when we got the application for review, we already knew if DPW or conservation felt that this met the criteria or not. As part of the staff memo. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Steve. Um, two questions. So first, um, if the if an applicant were to have their PE, you know, write a, write a memo saying that you know certifying comply, saying that they believe this met the requirement, is that something the board would accept? I wouldn't personally. I mean, I, I, again, I, if we set the expectation that this will be reviewed by the town engineer, uh -huh. then I think that they okay. would review um, okay. that they would review that. I mean, they should. That should be part of what they're doing anyway. Mm -hmm. Is the PE should be coming in and and telling us how? But you know, just like an architect tells you they are meeting the building code, you still review it to make sure. Right. So right. I would I would still be under the expectation okay. that the town engineer would review. Okay, yeah. And is NOAA 14 a different standard than NOAA plus, and is it more rain or less? NOAA <laughs> NOAA 14. <laughs> Is a little bit less than Noah yeah, Fourteen. Okay. All right. Other yeah. The, that's and I, that was yeah. one of my questions, which I didn't <laughs> send to Kelly, which is why they chose Noah Fourteen instead of yeah. Noah Fourteen Plus, because I was told, and maybe we could talk about this offline, that the state's going to end up using maybe Noah Fourteen Plus. So what David told me, and I don't know the specific answer to this, but what David did tell me is that the text that's in here, the language that's in here is where the town is moving toward. Okay. So we, we wanted to make sure that it's in the direction of forward. Yeah, because <laughs> so, I, yeah. Yeah, I know that like uh, our conservation commission used to uh, require Cornell uh, models and then they, you know, they went to a higher a, a model that predicted higher precipitation. So mm -hmm. if, it, if it's where we're going, then, then I'm happy. Yes. Yeah, Cornell's <laughs> very out of date. Any other questions on this item? Great. Uh, so we will open up Article 26 for public comment. Um, anyone who wishes to, um, Chris. It's uh, bottom of page four. Is this it? Nope. Uh, next one. Oh, sorry, down. Yep, a little bit lower. Go on. Next page. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. A little further. Right there. Right there. Oh, oh. Yep. Right there. It's all lines in it. Yep. So it replaces the, the um, strike out text. Thanks. Again, Chris Loretti, um, Adam Street. Just a, a couple of comments, questions. I guess the first kind of is a comment. If, if this is a good idea, why is it limited to the industrial zone? Shouldn't it apply to all, all zones and all larger developments? Because the industrial zone is a relatively small part of the town. I would think you'd want it to apply to you know, all the business districts and others as well. Um, I guess given the language of the article, you probably can't change it at that point, at this point, but um, I think it's something to keep in mind. I guess in, in regard here to um, um, uh, removing specific amounts of um, TSS and phosphorus, I, I would suggest that you need to be more specific about the methodologies you're going to use to determine those, those reductions. Um, you know, either specifically referencing certain analytical methods or other standards in either the town bylaw or state law. Um, because otherwise, I don't think you want to get into a situation where every applicant's going to come up with a different way of determining mm -hmm. compliance and just get their chosen professional engineer to certify that to you. I think you want to have consistency among the applicants. Um, and the other recommendation I would make is before you finalize this uh, that la this language that you refer this to the conservation commission just for comment because I think you know, water and um, stormwater and water pollution is really in their purview and they may well have some some good suggestions to address some of these questions um, so anyway I'll, I'll leave it at that but thanks Great. thank you for the feedback appreciate it Kelly? 
Did you have anything else? Um, sure. I, I can also add that David Morgan is also the conservation agent. So he worked with Pam Heidel and got her feedback on this, and she's on the Conservation Commission as well. So we're definitely trying to make sure that we're like uh, triangulating, I guess. Yes. You would say. Um, yeah, the the other, the one other question, just regarding the TSS, is that you know David had kind of walked me through this, and there was a there's a point at which there's a lot of like the text that's in here in order to prepare something that complies with this, there's a lot of other steps. And we didn't want to be so prescriptive in the zoning bylaw to, to list out all of the specific steps because thing, recognizing that things do change over time. But basically to get to this standard, there's a lot of additional background work that has to get done. That's often stated in a town or municipality stormwater bylaw, but isn't something that you would prescribe in the zoning. zoning. And there's yeah. more than one technology and engineering fix to reach these. And I don't think it would be our job or the town's job to say you must use A when B might be available or in two years C might be available. So this is more the modern way of doing environmental regulation, which is you set the standard and then how are they going to meet it? And in our case, you know, as I said, I would not solely rely on their engineer. I would want the town mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to take a look at it and to say, yep, that, that's a good way to do it. So and presumably the, the town engineer would have an opinion as to whether or yep. not a specific yep. methodology made sense. Yep. So that's, so that's why I thought this, with some wording changes I suggested, was fine. Any other uh, comments on Article 26? All right, so we'll move now on to Article 27, which is the zoning bylaw amendment for uh, solar in the industrial districts. And Kelly, I will turn it back over to you. Sure. Um, so these, this set of amendments, just minor text changes, are really the to reflect the fact that the Massachusetts Attorney General Office has approved the solar bylaw, but the industrial amendments were made prior to the solar bylaw, and so there are certain references um, in sections of the industrial district um, section of the bylaw that we need just to update to refer back, to refer over to section 6.4. Um, there's both in the main criteria, the main set of development standards. Um, there's a few things in here regarding um, just instead of saying that all new commercial and mixed use buildings shall be solar ready, we just want to refer that, make sure they just comply with section 6.4 because that's really our new standard now. Mm. Um, and Jean, we can talk about your comment when we get to that. Um, and then going into the exceptions to the maximum height regulations, um, I think I'm, I may actually, I think we could pull up that text and then what I, put in some suggestions here, but I think Jean probably has some specific ideas for how we would want to address this when we're, when we're talking about um, the exceptions to the maximum height regulations. Great, thank you, Kelly. Uh, Jean, do you want to start off then if you have specific items that you've I, I just, I, I gave Kelly a few suggestions, but it might make sense for Kelly and, and me to suggest them to discuss them first. Okay, that's yeah. fine. And Let's that was for the second section, right? 5.6.2 D7? Both, 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 both sections. Both sections? Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, the, the sort of the gist of it is right now this required some options. You could have solar ready, you could have green roof. Well, clearly, if they're required to do solar on at least 50%, they can't have green roof on 100%. So we have to do some of those sort of adjustments. And then if they're not... If they don't go through EDR review, maybe they do need to have solar and not just solar ready. So those are the gist of mm -hmm. a couple of suggestions that I gave to Kelly. Okay. And the wording, I was doing it at the last moment, so the wording okay. needed some fixing. Great. Uh, Ken, any questions or comments on the proposed text? No, this is more or less administrative uh, aligned with the state. Uh, it's, it's basically taking the what the attorney general approved, which was the addition of section 6.4, yep. and just making sure that we're updating the industrial district zoning by section of the zoning bylaw to refer to section 6.4, since that really kind of establishes the criteria. Great, Steve. Yeah, I do have one comment. Um, this is would be 562 D1. Uh huh. 
uh, where we strike the text shall be solar ready and replace it with comply with section 64 solar energy systems. Okay. Well, six f solar energy systems is only applicable for um, environmental design review. So where we're, we've sort of, you know, ah. there's a little bit of a meaning change is if a new building didn't meet the right. threshold for EDR, um, then, you know, you couldn't apply section 6.4 to it. So I, and I can send this to you afterwards, but I, I've written, some, written something. Um, yeah, something basically to split to split it up and to say all new commercial and mixed use buildings subject to environmental design review shall comply with section 6.4 at solar energy systems. All new commercial buildings not subject to environmental design review shall be solar ready. Yep, that kind of thing. Or require solar, which is my suggestion. Yeah. Um, and perhaps what may make sense is if since it wouldn't be a quorum to have the two of you and me have a conversation we mm -hmm. could maybe have a brief meeting to kind of have a, like a brief work session to mm -hmm. yep. hash through these and then bring them back for the 27th mm -hmm. i am in agreement with that okay ken yep all right any other questions for kelly or discussion on this item all right so we'll open it up for public comment um if anyone wants to um speak about uh, any comments on article, article 27. All right, uh, we will now move on to article 28, which is the zoning bylaw amendment related to building inspector enforcement, which is another administrative article. And I'll turn it back over to you, Kelly. Sure. Um, so this is administrative because back in 2020, um, in preparing and reviewing the proposed zoning amendments for special town meeting in the fall of 2020. This, um, there was a change proposed through citizen petition to add no such permit shall be issued until the building inspector finds that the applicant is in compliance with the applicable provisions of um, Title VI, Article Seven of the town bylaws. The, zo the ARB at the time voted no action um, because the ARB felt that it was not something we, we the zoning bylaw shouldn't refer to um, you can't make a building permit contingent on something that's not in the zoning bylaws. We can't refer outside to town bylaws in the text of the zoning bylaw as, as a measure of compliance. So um, the ARB voted no action and then it was brought back to, sp to special town meeting through a substitute motion and then town meeting voted to approve the amendment. When the amendment, when the zoning amendments as a package went to the attorney general, the attorney general wrote back and submitted a memo saying that this was unenforceable. So really this is administrative in nature because we're basically correcting something that is currently in the zoning bylaw that the ARB was not in support of originally and is actually as determined by the attorney general unenforceable. So really it's just striking the language that was added to, to bring it back to its original state. Great. Uh, I have no comment. I'm completely in support. No Kim. comment. Makes, makes sense that we do this. Steve? Yeah, I, I agree. It makes sense. Great. Uh, any public comments? Great. Uh, so that takes us through our warrant articles um, for 2023 town meeting for this evening. Um, we will take a vote to continue this public hearing to um, March 13th, at which time we will hear the additional uh, proposed zoning bylaw warrant articles for 2023 town meeting. Um, I do wanna note that our intent will be to deliberate and vote on March 27th um, with the uh, final report to town meeting um, being reviewed and voted on for acceptance the following week. Great. So is there a motion to continue? Yeah, one question. Please go for it. How many more motions are there? Three more. Three. Yeah, and they are all citizen petitions. So we have two petitions from James Fleming and then one petition from Tom Perkins. Okay. Uh, if we have any comments on those, it doesn't leave them very much time to make changes, right? Uh, give them two weeks. I mean, that's mm -hmm. more than 
some of them have had in the past. We, you know, usually rolled right into the vote, so, you know, the next week. So okay. I, th I think that's plenty of time. And okay. James, we've already heard mm -hmm. his yeah. two and um, even his comments. So okay. I feel comfortable with it, but I'll yeah. see if others okay. feel different. Okay. okay. Any other comments before we, um, before I take a motion to continue the public hearing uh, for the Warren Articles for 2023 town meeting to March 13th? So moved. Second. Take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm yes as well. All right. So um, the next agenda item is to vote to refer the Warren articles that the board um, initially uh, created for um, the next scheduled special or annual town meeting, which most likely will be in the fall. So. Kelly, did you have anything on this one? Yeah. Um, so Doug Heim suggested some proposed language for the vote tonight. It was on the agenda. Um, basically, um, it's a it's a little bit different than in 2020, where it just only moderately different. The articles that the ARB had discussed, but had decided at the request of the town manager not to review for town meeting this spring are not currently on the warrant. They're not on the draft warrant. Um, but we have discussed them. They've been in agendas. We've had meetings and some deliberation in, in public session. So um, we just wanted to have a formal vote tonight to move um, eight draft articles that were submitted but then withdrawn <laughs> to officially move them to a special town meeting in the fall. Um, and I can list out those articles. Yeah, I yeah. just saw the email that okay. you nope. sent to me before yeah, the meeting, so fine. I'm more than happy to, to okay. do that yeah, go and ahead. then craft the motion, yep. um, unless there are any questions for Kelly. Okay. Um, so we would be looking for a motion for the withdrawal of the draft articles um, number one, open space in business districts. Number two, rear yard setbacks in business districts. Number three, step back requirements in business districts. Number four, reduced height buffer area. Number five, corner lot requirements. Number six, height and story minimums in business districts. Number seven, Arlington Heights business district, zoning bylaw and zoning map amendments. And number eight, um, ARB. <laughs> the ARB jurisdiction, thank you, over industrial districts. Um, and the motion would be that those articles previously voted on to be placed on the draft town warrant be referred to the development board for further study, likely to be placed on the warrant for the next special town meeting by the redevelopment board in the interests of an efficient and focused discussion of zoning developments and MBTA communities, goals and requirements at the request of the town manager. I would so move. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And having us as well. Thank you, Doug, for your assistance. <laughs> and Kelly. All right. Uh, so our next item on the agenda is open forum. Would you like to, uh, <laughs> is there anything you'd like to share with us this evening? We ask that um, you please introduce yourself with first, last name, and address. Hi, everybody. I'm Susan Stamps, 39 Grafton Street, on the tree committee and uh, town meeting member, Precinct 3. And um, I'm actually the, uh, with along with Eliza Burden, um, we are the, the liaisons to the redevelopment board. I used to come to a lot of these meetings, but then when you went live, um, I, it, I I just didn't feel comfortable, but I feel comfortable coming now, and I'm excited to be able to start coming. Um, I don't really have anything to say, except that I've tried to be very um, in tune with the work that Kelly and Claire have been doing, and uh, Steve and Ken on the MBTA Communities Working Group. I've been attending those meetings. Um, it, I think they're incredibly well-run meetings. Not all meetings are. And, um, and I'm very excited about the work they're doing. And I have 
uh, taken it upon myself to be trying to be a bridge between housing advocates, which I am, and tree slash environmental ad advocates, which I also am. Um, I was on the housing authority in Carlisle where I used to live. Um, I have a good record of being in support of housing. I'm very uh, much in supportive here in, in Arlington. Um, Jean and I have had conversations about it. Steve and I have, have had coffee and talked about it. And I'm having conversations with many people. I know that housing can't, is, to a certain extent, a divisive issue in town as it is everywhere. Um, increasing density. So I hope to be a helpful voice in the discussions um, so that we can come to to um, solutions here for the MBTA communities and any other zoning changes we want to make um, that are that where all parties will feel heard and we'll be able to get something really good and um, I hope we don't end up with something like they have in downtown Malden if anybody's been there recently they they put up all this these new apartment buildings right near the train station and there are these huge square flat walled not in the least bit in any way shape or form aesthetically nice they're not when you walk down the street it doesn't make you feel good to walk by them and um city i've been doing a lot of research and munip municipalities across the country and um, it, it, there's a lot happening that is both increasing density, um, providing housing that's very needed, but doing it in, in, way, in a way that is very pedestrian friendly and makes for a walkable community. And that's what I want us to see us do here in Arlington. So I'm very supportive of what everybody's doing, even though I think they were kind of suspicious of me at first. <laughs> But um, <laughs> anyway, but th so that's really all I had to say. Thank you so much for coming Thanks. tonight, Thanks. Okay. And thank you so much Thanks. for your involvement. Thank you. Really thank you. It. Appreciate it. I like the restaurant with the flames out front. Say that again. I like the restaurant with the flames out front. In Malden? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, ran into, I ran into our senator, Evan Markey, there. Oh, that's I funny. Was there. Oh. We had a dog sitter who lived there, so that's in Malden. I, I thought I thought that area of Malden would get should get an award for most fenestration in a parking garage. <laughs> <laughs> they they have really excellent looking parking garages. I agree with you. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, and I think that will close open forum, but that'll take us into new business, which um, Kelly, I know you sent us a reminder. Um, and for those people watching us, um, if you would m wouldn't mind giving another reminder about the, I think it's March 15th. Uh, so no, March 9th. So there's nine. so this, many meetings so coming up. there's two which, upcoming meetings. Okay, thank yes. you. If you could give us an yeah, update yeah. on the upcoming meetings, that would be um, great. And the 15th is being posted to the calendar tonight. So, so the first one, and Susan too. Um, so the MBTA Communities Working Group is inviting everyone to participate in a community visioning session. Um, we've done a couple meetings with the working group. What has become very clear is we need to do, uh, we need to take a step back before putting things on maps and really understand the broader goals of the community. And I also have a lot of faith that this visioning session and a lot of the questions that we're having are actually going to help us a lot in the separate business district amendments that were discussed that the ARB is moved to the fall as well. So it's going to help us understand what the goals and priorities of the community are. Um, we definitely have been sending a ton of emails inviting everybody I know and everybody to invite their friends and family and neighbors um, to participate in this visiting, visiting session on Thursday at 7 p.m. The other thing that's starting on Thursday um, is that in, com in combination with the virtual public meeting, which not everybody can attend, we're also going to be opening up a survey uh, with the same questions that are going to be at this this community visioning session and then we're also releasing meeting in a box kits or community visioning kits so anybody who wants to have a separate visioning meeting in their home or invite some of their friends and neighbors who may not have heard about the meeting on the 9th or want to have a broader discussion we're putting together those materials right now so that people can have their own small group sessions or if somebody wants to invite a member of the working group or one of the staff to come in and work with them on 
a, a similar small group meeting, those things can continue to take place into the first week of April. So this is really how we're looking at this is just like an open-ended um, element of the project. And after April, we'll be moving into starting to actually look at locations. So the visioning session is going to inform how we apply these things to maps. And then once we understand several scenarios for where the, the location of the district or districts might be, we'll get into a little bit more of the, the guts of the zoning and what we're talking about with regard to setbacks and open space and height and units and all of these other details. But we really want to understand where first because we do have a very open-ended opportunity here. The second meeting is on the 15th. Uh, do you want to talk about this one? Sure. So we will be having on the 15th, um, in the Town Hall Auditorium, we'll be having a meeting about Mass Ave and Appleton Street, um, design concepts related to um, work that was done, temporary interventions um, related to the bike accident um, in 2019. Um, but what we're looking at is presentation of close to final concept, um, as well as discussion of uh, parking, um, different potentially street closures, and things like that. So I encourage everybody to come um, and comment, and uh, hopefully we'll finalize the design with your comments. So, Great. Thank you so much. Any questions from the board or any other new business? No, there's um, somewhere in a box in the planning department. <laughs> there is a plan. Even last words. <laughs> <laughs> there is a plan for Arlington Town Center that came out of the 1920s. And among the pieces of material in that plan is a crash map, which at least based on my last you know, quick glance at it, looks m remarkably similar to the crash map in the Connect Arlington Master Park. <laughs> and the thing that I, I'm now wondering is Appleton Street on that crash map. <laughs> Um, you know, this is one of, I, I mean, with roadways, I think part of the, although vehicles have gotten safer, like the environment created by a specific roadway, if it lends itself to crashes, it's going to do that until you do something different with the roadway. And I'm hoping that we can do that. Gene? We talked about coming back to this board a lot during the process of the MBGA communities. So it sounds like the meeting on Thursday and the survey are big steps. So when do we schedule you to come in and give us an update, those of us not on the committee? I think, um, Gene, last week we had said the, 20, the 20th or the 27th. So the 20th we canceled the meeting. Will we do the 27th? 27th? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. that would be great. And we will have a working group meeting as well in between that, so we can start to look at some of the preliminary results of the survey. Um, so I think that would be a good time that we could we can start to share some of that. Great, Ken. Any comments? No. Fun times. <laughs> There's a lot going on. All right. Um, oh, actually, if I could share please, one other thing, please. Um, this is this is sort of a separate pet project that we received CPA funding for in our project in our department. Um, the planning department has a lot of old, old, old files and planning maps. Yes. So <laughs> last week um, we had a document preservation preservationist come in and start to take a look at a lot of our old plans, our old maps, our old ARB minutes, um, starting to look through this. And I think one of the key recommendations from that is going to have an archivist come in. Um, but what we're really looking at doing is taking a lot of these old documents, old plans, the crash map from 1920s, um, and get them in digital form and then work with the library so that these, these documents and resources are more available to the public. Um, I think sometimes knowing the history of the town is so important in understanding the future, the future direction. And so I'm really excited that we're able to take the next step in this project. As, as someone who spent more than a few hours reading big legal books in, uh, in, the, in the planning office, I, I look forward to this. They, are, they really are a, a very valuable resource. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Claire, any other updates? You don't have to have any. Those were good. 
<laughs> no more updates. No. no. Not tonight. Thanks. Okay. Great. <laughs> Fabulous. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Great. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Good evening, everyone. Thank you.